Good morning. Welcome to worship. I invite you to stand as you're able. Face the baptismal font. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, Forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Extend. 
Jesus, ever-flowing fountain, give us water from your well. In the gracious gift you offer, there is joy no tongue can tell. Come to me. may be seated. Welcome once more to worship. Thanks for gathering in Jesus' name, for worshiping at home or here. All are welcome to the communion table. You'll be invited forward to receive these gifts of God for the people of God. A wafer will be placed in your hands, and you can pick up a cup. We have red wine and white grape juice. We also have gluten-free if you need, or we can bring communion to you in the pew. All are welcome. In this week ahead, we have our uh, food distribution tomorrow across from Woodstock High School. If you need food or know someone who needs food, uh, you can drive through and pick that up. Or if you'd like to volunteer, you can contact Mike Phillips. On Tuesday, uh, there's an on-site option to be trained to be able to reopen up our kitchen. So if you are interested, that would be great. Um, Tyler Pallack has done the online training He can answer any questions. We have a couple people coming in. We have a couple people doing it at home. And we've had others go to the in-person option. So this is great. Please consider uh, this option to support opening our kitchen. And I will say that so far, people who are participating work during the day. So we'd like another segment of our congregation with daytime availability uh, to consider being trained to support the use of our kitchen. So give it some thought. Ask Tyler any questions you have. And then this week on Thursday is another Grace Kindness Project. Uh, So you can ask Sally questions after worship. Um, Then uh, it's an opportunity. If you have paint supplies or rocks, um, bring them. Otherwise, just show up. And there'll be opportunity to paint rocks Then a visible expression and tangible way to share God's grace and love in the community. So that is Thursday this week at 2 p.m. Coming up on September 10th, one of my favorite days of the year, the 10th year that we and the ELCA are participating in God's Work, Our Hands Service Day. Uh, It's an awesome opportunity to serve near and far. We have on-site and community projects to serve people that are our nearby neighbors and globally. So we're looking for a few more site leaders and community partners. If you have ideas, let me know. And then keep an eye out. We'll be doing uh, school kits and personal care kits for Lutheran World Relief. So more information to come. Let me know if you'd like to support our ELCA service day for the 10th year. Thanks for worshiping this day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you and serve you through your son jesus christ our savior and lord amen a reading from zechariah rejoice greatly o daughter zion shout aloud o daughters jerusalem lo your king comes to you triumphant and victorious is he humble and riding on a donkey a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. 
and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare, I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 145, verses 8 to 14, responsively. The Psalms can be found in the ELW in the front section, beginning on page 339, and projected on the screen. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful one shall bless you. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all those who are bowed down. A reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer that I do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of the God, my most my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells within my members, wretched man that I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden 
is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. I think we have some children. Come on down. How are we doing today? Well, okay, I can do that. Of course, then they can't see, but, well, I'll tell you what, I'll stand right here. How's that? Okay? How are you doing today? Everybody okay? Huh? Beautiful day. Okay, on my poster here, I have a wall that's made of bricks, and I have a, a, a brick, something that'll look like a brick. How much do you think a brick weighs? Do you think that it's heavy? Yeah, it's pretty heavy, right? Usually, uh, there's bricks of different sizes, but maybe the uh, average brick would weigh about five pounds, which would be sort of like uh, maybe a half gallon of milk. So can you lift a half gallon of milk, maybe with two hands? Well, what about if you held it out in your arm like this? How long do you think you could hold Five pounds, I don't look at your hand and she's going, ooh, I don't think so. Um, how long do you think you could do that? All day long? No. Five seconds? Yeah, not too long, right? And because it gets too heavy, and the longer you hold it, the heavier it gets. Now, the same thing is true of burdens. Excuse me. Now, burdens are like troubles that we have and we, that we carry around with us. And there's a few examples of those uh, troubles that we might have. Maybe somebody having trouble in school with the schoolwork. Uh, maybe having trouble at home. Or maybe someone who's very, very sick. Um, maybe they fe feeling guilty about something they've done or maybe even not done. Um, maybe not having enough money. Maybe getting bullied, somebody getting bullied. Now, any of these are pretty heavy to carry around yourself, right? But we've got the good news that Pastor just read. We don't have to carry it alone. The Bible lesson today says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, that, another way to say that is Jesus is saying, Come to me, all of you who have troubles and have heavy loads. And then he also says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And another way of saying that, that Jesus is saying, is my way is a lot easier. My load isn't that heavy. So Jesus is our helper. That's what he's trying to say. And sometimes, you know, we hold on to these burdens and they just weigh us down, make us feel too heavy. But Jesus is there to help us. Now, um, on the poster up here in the corner, you see... It's a picture of Jesus' hand reaching down. There's a church, Catholic church in Inverness, Illinois, that when you walk in, instead of having the cross there, they have a sculpture of Jesus with his hand down. Isn't that a neat way to think of it? Jesus is there to help you. He's going to take your hand. And another one, if you look down here, What's Jesus carrying? Those of you that are close, what, what is Jesus carrying here? Luggage, right? Right. And you know what it says? It says, I got your baggage, now follow me. In other words, he's got our troubles, let's follow him. Okay? Now, there's a word, or a little song, that I want you to repeat after me, and everyone can repeat, to help us to remember to bring our troubles to Jesus. You ready? Okay? I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Thank you. Let's pray, and you don't have to repeat after me now, okay? <laughs> Father, sometimes our burdens, our troubles are more than we can bear. Help us to remember that Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary, tired, burdened, and I will give you rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Have a great day. Thank you. Well, my Fitbit app sometimes gives me these helpful TED tidbits. Every once in a while that I try to read as helpful and not judgmental. Try going to sleep at the same time each night to set a consistent sleep schedule. Or to know how much sleep you really need, pay attention to how much sleep you get when you're on vacation. And then I have this daily readiness score. It goes from 1 to 100, with 100 being fully ready for the day ahead. Now, for me, that score varies, but it looks like a 1, low readiness, on the morning that follows a very eventful day, or say, last Saturday after a week away at camp. Perhaps you have something equivalent, an aura ring or an Apple Watch, or that reliable mental inventory each morning when you wake up and see how ready or not you feel for the day ahead. At times, I think that some of us can get up in this kind of warped exhaustion Olympics. How are you? I'm so tired. I did X, Y, and Z. Oh, I know. I was up all night doing A, B, and C. It can be as if it's a badge of honor or worth to be so tired from so much doing. And then there are other times where I think we just don't know how to slow down. One of the tensions that I have heard people name again and again is recalling their fast-paced lives a few years ago and then how that sudden restriction and activities early in the pandemic affected people in different ways. And now there is a constant discerning of what to do with one's time and resources and how to back out of overcommitted schedules or to engage in the most meaningful of ways. It's a pretty tiring cycle. It's perpetuated, I think, by our cultural values of proving, earning, climbing an elusive ladder to success. Always doing as tied up in the temptations to just defy the limits of bodies and time and functioning capacity. And then there's another kind of weariness that perhaps all of our apps can't quite track. Chronic type. Weariness from long-lasting medical conditions or of broken relationships or the weariness from the toll of broken systems, generational poverty, and gun violence, and institutional racism, or religious trauma. Weariness from carrying heavy burdens. All those layers that just add up. Grief, responsibility, difficult decisions, and so much more. Eugene Peterson is an author and scholar who translated scripture into conversational English in a format that's called The Message. And so he translates part of today's gospel reading that we just heard as this. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now, Jesus had been teaching his disciples about the cost and the challenges of following him. It's what we've been hearing in worship the past few weeks. It's pretty clear that it is anything but easy to follow Jesus. And Jesus invites us to come to him, for he will give you rest. Rest. 
renewal, a breath of fresh air, rest for your weary souls and bodies and whole beings, a break and a respite from the weariness and the burdens that you carry with you each day. Jesus disrupts all those cycles that wear you down. How in the world can it be possible, we wonder? Come to me, Jesus says. When there are so many other ways or places or behaviors that we can take on to try to find rest, be it practices of good boundaries or helpful self-soothing or harmful self-medicating, it's Jesus who gives wholeness and healing, rest and salvation. Now, often we think or hear about freedom. It's paired with the the throwing off of the yoke of the oppressor, or it's the removing of some restrictive weight bearing down on one's shoulders. So it's somewhat confusing that we hear Jesus still calling his followers to take his yoke upon them. But there's a difference. Being yoked to Christ, Jesus takes on that heavy lifting. Jesus' yoke is easy, his burden is light, because of who he is. Jesus is gentle and humble in heart. And this Jesus indeed sets us free. Jesus bids all to come and follow, and the rest that he gives is so much more than a solitary good night's sleep or a miraculous free day on your overscheduled calendars, or a momentary pause and the endless medical appointments or bills or the persistent vulnerability you may face in the world's systems. Jesus' rest is all-encompassing. It's an all-encompassing freedom, and it's freedom from earning, providing, proving, Acquiring, seeking, achieving, and exhaustive striving. Jesus' rest is full and complete, and it's the grace that saves us. Come to me, Jesus says, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Sometimes those words, that invitation from Jesus, seems like our much longed-for balm to our souls. And sometimes Jesus' rest seems so countercultural that we just can't wrap our minds around it. It must be too good to be true. As you consider your own energy or weariness, the heavy burdens that you're carrying with you right now in this time and space, as you take a bit of a mental inventory of how ready you feel for the rest of the day, or the week ahead, are all the joys and sorrows of living. Remember that Jesus' rest is for you. You are not responsible for fixing everything that is broken. You're not expected to do it all on your own. Your faith should compel you to be a part of God's love, being made known in the, ro- in the whole world, but you also need to dwell well and the assurance of God's unbreakable love for you and grace for you. I invite you now to hear with me words written by Cole Arthur Riley. She's an author and a poet who is the creator of Black Liturgies. It's a project that seeks to integrate the truths of dignity, rage, justice, and rest into written prayers. So you can find more by following on Instagram or look for a recent book entitled This Here Flesh. But for now, I invite you to get comfortable. Ground your feet on the floor. You can close your eyes if that's a comfortable position for you. I will share one of Riley's breath prayers. 
So you'll focus on a different phrase as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Let us begin. Rest is not a reward in exchange for your exhaustion. You are worthy of it now. You don't have to wait until it hurts. Slow down long enough to reclaim yourself today. You inhale, I don't have to wait to be restored. And exhale, I enter rest without apology. Inhale, there is beauty in the stillness. And exhale, I am free to rest. You can open your eyes now. Move your body around a bit. Keep breathing deeply and pay attention to how Jesus' invitation to rest seems dissonant to your plans or routines. Believe that you are worthy of rest and remember all the ways that Jesus has set you free. And to close, I invite you to hear another prayer written by Cole Arthur Riley. Let us pray. God who rests. It is difficult for us to imagine a Christ who, having all power and capacity to heal others, still at times walked away, who napped unapologetically in the face of danger. Give us the courage to rest, the holy audacity to do absolutely nothing at all. And as we do, Allow us to hold vigil for the tombs of this world while honoring that we are neither savior nor slave. Grant us a slowness that allows us to feel what hurts and makes healing possible. Let our rest be our liberation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, found in the front section in the ELW on page 105. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. I believe that he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O God. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made, rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations, botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, you desire that all peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, province, and local, to work for justice, murky, mercy, and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. God of compassion, you bring healing to those who are sick, consolation to those who are grieving, and well-being to those who are distraught. Send skilled caregivers to all in need, and make your presence known among all who suffer, especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around word and sacrament, and encourage children in their learning and growing, and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. We pray for Joanna Bergstrom, Evan Laham, Adeline Weedoff, and Audrey Weedoff as they go to Lutherdale this week. Bless them and surround them with your grace as they grow in faith. Hear us, O God. God of faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful departed, you reveal your love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace.
We give thanks for your generosity, your giving, your simple prayers, and your profound acts of generosity. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the river of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy God, our Maker, Redeemer, and Healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to share, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Time of trial. 
deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. All is ready. All are welcome. to bear Oh what 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. At this time, we have a blessing and sending for those going to camp this week. So Audrey and Addie Jo and Johanna and Evan are heading to camp. Come on up. So this summer, we have seven elementary students from Greece going to different camps. Uh, we have four heading out this day. They'll be at Lutherdale for Adventure Week. And we have three more throughout the summer. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for Audrey and Addie Jo and Evan and Johanna as they set out for a week of camp at Lutherdale. Watch over them, bring them joy and new friends and time to be in your creation and learn more about you. Bless all those who go from here to learn and play at camp. Bless our time growing in faith, exploring creation, nurturing friendship. Bless those who receive them and the fruits of their labor. And may those who are sent receive blessing in return. May the gifts they use and share be signs of your love to all people. To you, O God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. Safe travels and have fun. And the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Whose trust ever childlike
peace, share the harvest.